Hey guys, it's Rahim. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, smash the subscribe button because I talk about property investment, personal development, and how to gain financial freedom. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the three basic money skills you need to know in order to gain financial freedom. Here's the thing, in order to gain financial independence, you must apply discipline, consistency, and perseverance. So I'm gonna walk you through these three basic skills you need to master in order to become not just financially independent, but to become a multi-millionaire along the way. So if you wanna learn those three skills, stay until the end. But before I get to that, we've done a research recently. We realized 87% of the people that are watching our videos have not smashed that subscribe button. If you are one of those, I would like you to please, please, please do me a favor, smash that subscribe button because that will help, our, help the algorithm to push the videos out there to so many people that can gain and benefit from it. And I'm looking to start interviewing people in my youtube channel as well so i want to grow the channel in a way that I, when i approach people they'll be able to uh, be part of this community so thank you so much for doing that if you've already done it let's get to the basic skill to making money so the number one thing you need to do if you really really want to be successful or financially independent it's about spending right you see statistics shows the people are struggling financially are people that spend big are people that really really go on spending big and they spend more than what they are earning suppose you're earning two thousand pounds and then you're spending um uh, say 1,900. I can even say that it's overspending because literally you're 100 pounds away from being broke, okay? So um, some people are even spending over what they're earning by supplementing it with credit cards or bank loans. So if you are really, really looking to become successful and financially independent, you need to be disciplined in your spending. You need to be only spending in things that add value to you, things that would bring you steady reoccurring income instead of just spending in things that doesn't bring you money. So what are these things? It could be a car, it could be a shirt, it could be trainers, it could be a gym, it could be going on holidays, it could be buying people presents just to impress them. Things like that is what we could spend. Or maybe you are on this amount, you went and looked for a, one of the most expensive house in your area and then you rented the house just to show off or you bought that house just to show off and then you end up working for the house or you end up working for the for the car so these are the things that gets people to spend more than that they're earning so here's the thing if you really want to be successful do not spend to impress spend on things that add value to you and your family so you, as long as you and your family are happy trust me the world is happy do not do things to impress family and friends because that's what gets you to overspending second thing also um, basic thing you need to master. I know you may have heard this so many times or you, people have been banging on this so many times or I've been banging about this in my videos so, so many times. I am doing that because I know you're not taking action. So today is what, you, so today hopefully will be the last time I'm gonna mention this to you. Saving. So you need to be saving. Right, you need to be saving money. You need to be saving 20 to 30% of your take home salary. You may be thinking, well, how the hell am I able to save all that money when I've got XYZ spending to do? It's like, it's looking at your expenses. Look where you're spending money that doesn't really need to be spent. Perhaps you've got subscriptions that you don't even use. Perhaps you're paying for stuff that you're not even thinking about. So these are the ways you can reduce your expenses. And then what you do, you look at your fixed cost. All the fixed costs you have, if they have expiration date, make sure when that expiration date comes to effect, basically you renew it with a lower cost. What do I mean fixed cost? Fixed cost could be, for example, if you take a mobile phone now, right that mobile phone may be 60 pounds a month so if you've got the contract obviously you have to pay that 60 pounds every single month so that becomes a six a fixed cost for the next 18 to 24 months so that becomes a fixed cost so maybe your water rate as well it may be um, fixed at the moment so once your contract expires go back and renegotiate to see if you can get it lower same for to your broadband and telephone bills people are surprised when I say I negotiate my broadband bills. I do negotiate my broadband bills. I negotiate in every single thing in my life. I negotiate with my children. I negotiate with my wife, okay? I negotiate all the time. Literally, people are fed up of me as a result because why? I wanna know where, where my pennies are going because once I know where my pennies are going, I'll be able to save them, which is the second basic skill. Saving, this is people are struggling on that. The reason is because they're way, 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 living way over their means. So what it then do once you save that money, do not save it for long term as well. Here's the thing, if you did, inflation will be eating into it. You don't want inflation 
to eat into your savings. Save it until you reach a certain amount. And guess what? The next step is to invest. Invest it in asset that brings you passive reoccurring income while it goes up in value. You may be thinking, what are these assets? One of these assets could be a property. You could, you, you could buy a property, right? Rent it out, get your monthly income while the value of the property goes up. It could be buying a share from a company. I'm not saying trading shares, that is two different things. I said buying shares. So instead of trading the shares, you can buy and hold the shares and you get your tiny de de dividend every single month or every quarterly or half yearly or yearly, however that company tend to pay their dividend. But guess what, what, what's happened along the way? Your dividend shares or your, the value of your dividend will be going well, hopefully if the company is doing really, really well. So if you don't want to risk it, maybe you want to look for index funds, for example. You could save in an in index fund, but the thing about index fund, you may not be having monthly recurring income, but believe you me, it performs not greatly. You may be having to look at it maybe in a yearly basis or maybe every two years. You can see that grow. It grows and grows and grows. You'll be surprised how much index funds will give you. Index funds are one of the safest way to make your money work for you instead of you working for it. And if you're looking long term in the index fund is what you um, want to be looking at. But the best of all for me is properties. Now, properties, I've told you this just now, is basically you can buy a dead property, you do it up, make it really, really nice, right? And then force the value, remortgage that property, just pull some of your money out. If you're lucky, you pull all of your money out. You rent that property, it makes you that reoccurring income whilst the asset goes up and you can use the same money so you can go again, buy another property, do it up, make your profit, do go again. You can do it multiple times. And the thing about property is basically also, it gives you better return on investment than your stock and shares in most cases, right? Because if you get a normal buy to let, perhaps say you got a three bedroom, let's say a two bedroom buy to let somewhere, anywhere in the UK, should be generating you anywhere between 250 pounds to about 500 pounds. So if you know what you're doing, if you're making 500 pounds net profit every single month for an 100,000 pounds investment, it's way better than taking that 100,000 pounds to invest in stock and share. Here are the two massive differences. The first difference, if you want to buy stock and share worth 100,000 pounds, you need to have that 100,000 pounds ready to invest in stock and share because the bank will not lend you. The beauty about the about property, you can see 100,000 pounds property, the bank lend you 75% of that, you take the 25%, you put it in, you got a house that makes you about 300 to 500 pounds every single month. So it's better return on your investment. So the next thing now you've done, you've got your your spending reduced, you've saved that money, you've invested it, and the next thing you need to do, which is the fourth thing which I did not include, is to give back. Now, listen to this. The beauty of giving back is the pleasure you get from serving, helping people that are in difficulty. Suppose now you've got your property portfolio, you've got businesses, you're making passive recurring income and you're financially in, in, independent. You can go again, spend in your church, literally give back to your church, give back to your mosque, give back to your synagogue, to give back to your temple, give back to your community. You can give back to whoever you want to give back to, whatever organization you want to give back to. And most importantly, you can go and create your own charity in a way that you can control who you're giving your money to. So I really hope this video has been helpful. If this video has been helpful, smash the like button below. Subscribe to my channel for more amazing videos. I look forward to sharing next video. Thank you.